Hello and welcome to Gaming Like It's 1979. Today we're going to play through Chapter 2 of Alan's Automaton Workshop. So what's happened since the last time? Well, Alan Turing is now wearing clothes, which is a definite improvement. The maid is wearing clothes as well. I'm much happier with this form of dress. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't have any British uh, background or any English or Irish or Scottish or anything like that, but boy, seeing them in uh, shirt sleeves is really upsetting me in, in Georgian times or 1930s. I guess it's not Georgian. So what have we got here? Lady Preston is going to introduce us to what she wants us to repair. We've got John Newman here, obviously a reference to John von Neumann, the creator of the computer. Let me adjust the audio a little bit here so it's a little more clear. Oh, and we have, she's now the assistant. Okay. An automated coffee cart. That sounds perfect. It's morning while I'm recording. So the idea of having an automated coffee machine would certainly be lovely. They want us to fix this cart. Okay. I can hardly wait. It's true. I can hardly wait. Oh my goodness, it's a fake. It's like the... Um, the uh, chess automatons from the Middle Ages, which really had a, a small person hidden inside of them to move things. Oh, the Mechanical Turk. The cost is not an issue. You know, it's so rare when a customer tells you the cost is not an issue. All right, Al Jamel. Looks like we've got about eight or nine parts here. I love these little transitions. Uh, they actually do kind of match what you're going to see inside. Not precisely, but very closely. I do like them. All right, so our challenge here is to turn on CMLK. I guess that's milk. If the third switch from the right on control array is one, I guess this is the third switch. We have some statistics here. It should take us Two devices, one node, and one transition. All right. And that's our switch. See, milk. Oh, I, I never saw that there was a reference manual before. That's great. Gives us all of the API, essentially, for these things. That's great. First, left, right. Compound device that combines several switches and access each switch by the read-write head. Move left, right, set the value of the switch being pointed to. Automaton will test the value of the switch being pointed by the read right head matches the container, well, I guess. All right, so the head is starting at left. Are we allowed to assume that, that that's a starting position? Uh, they're gonna tell us.
All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the assumption that we get to assume this is the starting state, and could be false, right? We might find out that we're wrong. Certainly, they're giving us this, which seems like a hint that that is in fact the case. So we're going to create a new node. Right, and the only thing we need to do is if that switch, ah, I messed it up, if that switch is one. So, array test one, and if that is the case, then we want to turn on milk. Right. Feels like this is just the intro to arrays. All looks right. I'm going to speed this up. What just happened? We have some sort of... I'm not sure what just happened. Do I need a breakpoint? Oh, I have an extra transition here, it looks like. So we had an infinite loop. Try that again. Wrong answer. Okay, what's wrong with this test case? Let's try it again. Let's step. Start. Move to the left. Is that one third switch? Oh, third switch from the right. I somehow read that as third switch from the left, so I'm a dope. Alright, let's get rid of that transition. Can I put more than one? I don't think I can put more than one value here. I think we need different transitions. One, two, right? Okay, and we will move this to the left and move this one to the left. And I think we, we're assuming that our starting position is set. So we'll just make those default transitions. And then this is the one that has to be a real transition with array one. Okay, let's try it again. Wrong answer again. Oh, because again, I have I'm going left, left, left. So I have too many. Well, I tell you, I'm not programming very well this morning. Try it again. Oh, I see the gate means it's running a lot of tests all at once. Great. We even got the optimal the optimal answer there. Add in a missing device. Add an integrator from new item plate. Okay. We can do that. We got a little tutorial here. I'm going to skip it. Increment and dec decrement. Great. Oh, loops. How exciting. Reset all four switches on the control array to zero. All right. Let's see. Where's our start? Right there. And this is our increment. Let's go read the 
documentation on the incrementer. Set the value to X, decrease on transition. Okay. So I think what we want is for each of these switches, which is that array, we want to set the value to zero. And then we want to move left. What is I2? I2 is the integrator. We're going to use that for something else. This is going to be moving the array to the left, I believe. Right? Yeah, it's starting all the way on the right. Okay, and I think that's just going to be our default. We only want to move to the left if the integrator Let's see, I'm going to count. I'm going to try and not do an off by one error this time. If the integrator is starting at zero, I don't want to st set it to, I don't want to count down, which is how I would do it naturally, because I don't want to waste a node on setting it. So let's assume we're counting up from zero, zero to one, one to two, two to three. So if the integrator is three or greater, we do not want to do this transition integrator. This is a very interesting way of handling conditionals. Um, obviously, you would never want a real programming language to work this way because you're limiting yourself to a finite number of states. But in the context of a finite state machine, or a small finite state machine, I feel like this, this is kind of removes questions of order of operation from the user, which I think is very clever. Okay, and then this is going to transition back by default. And I did discover you can do this, which is nice. Now let's do that. Let's see if that works. Wrong answer. Did this not actually transition? Oh, I got this exactly backwards, didn't I? I did. Still managing off by one error is impressive. I guess it's not really an off by one error. All right, let's speed this up. That looks like it's working. Oh, now I've got a problem. Okay, so what's going on there? Zero, one, two. See, I think that should be stopping. Let's set a breakpoint, right? Can I do that? I think there's a way to set a breakpoint. Yeah. So let's run this test, which is the one we were doing. Step. Okay. Oh, because I'm never actually increasing the integrator. Right. And I think we want to increase it here because we want to do the set and then we want to bump it up. Increment. Now, an interesting question is, will the incrementer reset after each run? I don't know if they're going to do that. Let's find out. Well, let me clear that breakpoint. That's interesting. I left the breakpoint on. I see. Okay. Here we go. Okay, it looks like the integrator does reset, which means our little two-node algorithm should work. Finally. 
Wrong answer in eight. All right, let's take a look. Array set to zero. You transition. Integrators one. Integrators two. I see. So I'm off by one once again. My life is a never ending series of off by one errors. I'm not proud. Lovely. Interesting. So why aren't I getting that speed certification? Probably because we are doing unnecessary sets. Eh, I'm not going to worry about it. Can always come back and make it faster later. If you're looking for the optimal playthrough, you'll find a different video. Every letter on reader tape TODR implies an order. Use the mixer and the recipes on memo to brew all the coffee on T order. For example, L for latte, AL for latte first, then an Americano. All right, so to the right is earlier. And this is our tape, huh? And here is basically giving us a switch. <laughs> A switch statement, right? This is our mixer, which is probably going to be add ingredient, then serve. I don't think that that's just for our use. We're going to have to read the tape, aren't we? Read only tape. Move the read write tape of reader tape to the next symbol. Test the value of the symbol being pointed by the read right head. All right. Any other devices here? Do we need any other devices? I don't think we do. Oh, we can add a not modifier. If the value of the device matches none of the parameters, it counts as available. When it's not blank, take this transition. Okay. Got our registers and our integrators. All right, let's take a look. So the amount of space we have to work with here is a little bit constrained. Like, even though this is just... Um, just for fun, right? <laughs> Essentially, just window dressing. I find that I want to look at it, uh, and yet I can't when I'm in this state. And in fact, it's pretty clear that's what this comment note is really for, right? So I'm going to go ahead. this note is actually the thing that we care about the most. I think they're trying to tell us that B is going to be the sim tape symbol for long black. So we'll capitalize that. All right, put that there. All right, so what do we have? Again, I'm not going to worry about efficiency here. We've got one sort of chain that begins with E, right? And do I need to say next to get the first symbol on the tape? I think I do. Nope, we're getting... Uh, so just by hitting play, we had the order pop in, right?
Okay. Let's start with just doing the cappuccino then. Right. So we'll do this as naively as possible. It's going to be cappuccino. And then in here, we're going to do our mixer. Can I do multiple mixers at once? I don't think so. Add espresso. Oh, no, I cannot. Milk and then two foams, huh? serve? No. So I think the deal is that you could only add multiple um, actions if they're going to um, happen at the same time. Serve. All right. Well, again, I'm, I'm just not at all going to worry about efficiency. I want to see if I can serve a cappuccino. And yes, partially that's because I would really like a cappuccino right now. Stop. C. Espresso. Milk. Foam. And then sir. Okay, and that passed. Oh, and we need to advance the tape now. No, it looks like the tape is advancing. So why, why even teach us about that? I guess this is just showing you how to read the tape and we don't have to worry about advance. Oh, no, no, because the tape is going to have test cases later on. Here, let's go to test case four. Right. And so if I'm correct, this means latte Americano Americano. think. Expected outputs. Yeah. No, see, this is wrong. Um, or rather, the documentation is wrong. AL for latte first, then an Americano. I think they meant the exact opposite, because if we look at the expected outputs here, it's kind of small. I don't know if you could see it. That is clearly an Americano, and then another Americano, and then a latte. So it is, in fact, from left to right, and the documentation is just mistaken. Uh, they managed to do this with only five nodes. That's amazing. All right, but over here, when we've gotten to serve, right, what's going to happen? I think we want to move to the next symbol and then transition back. to one of these. I don't see how they did this with only four and five nodes, unless I'm somehow, I must be missing something. Like foam seems to always come after milk, but sometimes foam comes after foam. With five nodes and five transitions, I guess we could we always have three waters. That's interesting when we have water at all. All right, well, I'm, as I said before, I'm gonna treat this as the worst, least efficient thing possible because I don't care about these 1930s English people's cost. We're just going to make them super inefficient. And that actually um, fits my philosophy, which is first make it work and then make it fast. Don't try and make it fast right away. The so latte is espresso, followed by milk, followed by more milk. 
Followed by foam. I would argue that one does not put foam on coffee. What just has foamed milk and you mix it accordingly. Okay, that's all I think correct. And then we need to, uh, I guess, transition back to the start from here. Oh, look at that, I can change that. Except start, is start actually a node? Start is not a node. Well, that sucks. Oh. Well, clearly we could replicate these and just send them to the head, which again, not very efficient, but I'm okay with that. Long black is our water. And then we're going to do three waters and an espresso. No! This is a transition, which is going to be long black, right? And then last we've got the Americano branch, which is going to be espresso, water, water, water. So this is clearly how one could make this more efficient, I think, um, in that there are definitely patterns and you can build a state machine that uses them more cleverly than I'm doing. I'm curious if he will chide me for doing such a terrible design. All right, so now the only thing we need to do is transitions back from here which is going to be exactly the same as what we've got here. Latte. Long black and Americano. I'm legit curious to see what is not going to work here. So let's find out. So this is making, in theory, our Americano. Moving to the next. All right. Seems like it's working. Well, let's speed it up. Running a bunch of tests. Wow, so that's funny. This is great. This shows us the trade off, the efficiency trade off. So I made an extremely inefficient device in terms of number of nodes and transitions. Points is uh, negative, not negative, more points is bad, right? Um, but by doing that, I managed to make it much faster. So these people told me money is no object. So my headcanon is absolutely that I was extremely inefficient, but in terms of uh, money and resources, but gave them a super efficient, fast coffee machine in return. And I'm not going to go and try and go for the other award. Well, now we've got some dialogue. God help us.
She's a, a real computer. Messes things up just like one. All right, we're on to the second batch here in the boiler. Mapper node. Write the corresponding number of X marks on the tape T out based on the selected value of the timer, R timer. So when R timer is one, X, two, X, X, three, four, five, six looks. Okay, why is this tricky? I'm not sure I understand. And doing this with zero nodes and two devices. Oh, I see, that's my current usage. All right, I feel much better now about our previous um, our previous effort, now that I know I was misreading what this was trying to tell us. This is telling us, I think, what the standard is, but it's not telling us how many we need to use. All right, so it sounds like for each of these, oh, now it's gonna explain it to us. Oh, it's uh, F map. It's literally projecting a value from one. Uh, it's, it's an arrow. It's it's projecting a value from one function to another. Great. Okay. Most common application is to copy the value from the source device to the target device. All right. Well, let's grab is that a mapper new mapper node. Okay. We need to from R timer to T out, right. Is that it? Is that literally all we have to do? Let's take a look. You're a wrong answer. Oh, I didn't actually put a transition in. Yeah, try that again. Okay. Oh, I actually have to Ew. What? What? All right, let's see. Can we get... Yeah, I don't... I don't understand this even a little bit. Maybe I should watch the video again. Based on the selected value of our timer. So the thing that I don't see here, I guess if I make another node, this node can read the timer? No, it can't read the timer at all. In other words, the thing that's confusing me here is, okay, so we have this value coming in, but I don't see how I can use that value in, say, an integrator, like the integrator that they suggested using, perhaps. Unless that timer is going to decay over time, part of my language. Pardon my pun. I mean, I guess. I don't know. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'll try it that way. Right, and that's giving the wrong answer because we want two X's. But as near as I can tell, I, I don't see how to... A 
as long as I can't... Oh, but once I've written an X... Okay, maybe... Maybe the answer here... Can I undo this? Let's throw this away. Can I use that question mark... node? No, because it'll... Uh, the spec doesn't call for us to write a question mark. And so if we're writing a question mark, that's not the right output. And that'll fail. All right. Oh, source. Look at that. Oh, I see. Now that we have an integrator, we can write that value to the integrator, maybe? Right. Okay. That's much better. Um, so that's going to set the value in the integrator, and at that point, just send a default over here. And at this point, we can start actually writing things. Write x, and then decrement, and then set a loop as long as i2 is not zero. This would be a good place to use that inversion. Right. Can I make that a bigger loop? Nope. Okay. Let's see if that works. Much better. Let's speed it up. Here we got a wrong answer on nine. Why did we get a wrong answer on nine? Inputs, zero. Expected outputs, nothing. Oh, because we have told it to do that even in the case when I2 is zero. Great. <laughs> what did I do? Why why is my speed certification off by 0 0.2 steps? Oh my gosh. Uh, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Uh, looking at this logically... No, I don't know why. Don't know why. Ah, don't care. Parameterless actions. I'm very nervous that the old British lady is taking the doll with her. For each reading X on the pressure reading tape TPSI, output a value of 9 minus X on recorder tape T out. Okay, so we've got, for example, and now is this 6 or is this 6 1? I think this is 6 1. Right, and in fact, it confirms it in our test case. Six, one, nine minus X, output three, eight. So we have two tapes here, our input and our output. So this is really our first Turing machine in the sense of, you know, I guess those have a single tape, a, a, a classical Turing machine. It's both input and output, but let's see. 
Got our reference. Recorder, a write only tape, and this is going to be a read only tape, huh? Okay, so I think we're going to need an integrator because that's the only way. Oh, we could use map to do it, can't we? So setting up a source device and target device and any actions, we can adjust each value and its corresponding action parameter. Okay. Let's see if we can do it with just a mapper. Nine minus X, huh? Mm. No, I don't think we can do it that way because we have no notion. No, we do because this is our X. So nine minus one would be eight, right? Nine minus zero would be nine and so on. Six. Zero, and leave that blank if so. This seems too easy. This can't be the answer. Oh, we need to then transition to the next state, which is just it's just that, I think. No, we have to go to the next. We actually need a, a state here. PSI next and then back. Now is that an infinite loop there or will it know to stop at the end of the tape? It's an infinite loop. Okay. So the transition back, they kind of have implied kind of have implied stops here one thing I don't love. So the transition back is basically not blank. Otherwise we stop. And I think I am actually doing this not as efficient as I could be. Because I think it's actually doing work on the blank version. Well, let's see. Yeah, let me just... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh well. Heater. Decompose the R steamer selected temperature setting to a combination of twos and ones. Ooh, it's actually rather clever. For example, seven equals two plus two plus two plus one. Write the results on the recorder tape. T out. Twos go before any ones. Can I do this with some mappers? So, 
So the source is that the target is going to be the tape. The action is going to be to write. No, because if the source is the tape, then we have no way of looping or keeping state. <sighs> So maybe what we need to do before we do this is add an integrator. Now, wait a minute. Is there a reason to add a register versus, can I, can I add a register? What happens if I do that? Our source is steamer register and write that to, okay. Right, and so that sets the register. Let's go ahead and just look at the register. Okay, that's what we want, I think. Not sure if we need a register or an integrator here, because um, I don't necessarily want to increment or decrement. What I want to do is map multiple times. Okay, so this sets the register. At that point, the source is the register, the target is the tape, the action is going to be to write. We're going to make sure through transitions that the register never contains zero. If the register contains one, then we want to write one. If the register contains two or more, we want to write two. Okay, and then at that point, we want another mapper we can do this with just mappers. Okay, and now the source is the register. The target is also the register. We're going to have to come back and deal with the zero case. And everything here, we're just going to subtract two. probably some reason why doing this with mappers is a terrible idea. That's okay. okay. So now we have written and we have subtracted two. And so at that point we transition back to here. If register is not zero. If it is zero, I think we end up there and stop. I think that's also true here. We don't need this at all. It seems like I, I must be missing something, but let's give it a go. Well, I got at least one test case, right? Yeah, that's, oh, look at that, right as I was getting. So this is the zero case that I did not handle. And so I think we need to make this transition exactly the same as the others. We've written it to the register. We only progress if it's not zero. Looking good.
Interesting. I'm clearly not letting something about the efficiency fit in my mind, or something isn't fitting in my mind, but like I said, not going to focus on it. Calculate how many ones are on control array and set RS power to the corresponding number. Power register. All right, so this is simple addition. So if we have four ones, we want to set it to four, I think. So it's not quite binary logic yet, but they're clearly setting us up to get there. Well, here, I think we definitely will want an integrator because we are going to want to add things. We'll add a state transition, start here. In fact, we're gonna need two. So, if the array is set to one, and we're gonna add a value to the integrator. Right. Oh, wait a minute though. The issue is we probably want to use the integrator. We probably want to use the integrator to know where we are on this array, right? Let's start over. So what are we going to do here? Well, we know we're always going to be We need two integrators to do this? We might need two integrators if we want to use an integrator to move us to the left. So we can either, it feels to me, spend the complexity to make this arbitrary, or we could just do four nodes. <laughs> we could spend a bunch of nodes with basically no integrator, uh, with only one integrator. Let's spend a bunch of nodes. I'm a big believer in spending that kind of logic. All right, so Q1 is going to be... array is one, then our integrator is going to increment. Otherwise, it's not going to. And then we're going to move to the left. Can I reorder these? Does the order matter? I think the order matters. Is there no way to do this? I guess it, no, it doesn't matter because we've already done the comparison. So these are in fact independent options, independent items, right? Two, three, Can I copy a transition? Ugh, that's too confusing. Right. Now, the problem here is this integrates that 
This. I see. I get it. Maybe. Right. Move left on the last one anyway. Mm -hmm. Not what I wanted. Copy that one. Paste it. Paste it. And now we can do the rest of this with just transitions, right? That's our default. this is only when only when this is set to work. Same here. In the array is set to one. Right, same here. The array is set to one. These go away. Right, so we have a fast path when there's nothing set to one. And we have the slow path where we're actually incrementing things. And then we need one final node to actually, we could actually map that, couldn't we? Let's do a mapper. Our map is the uh, integrator. And yeah, and we're just literally, should only be those cases, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, I did it again. There. Here we go. I love, I'm really glad they reset all this at the end because it would be very depressing if I had to undo all that state. All right, we got it. And now on to the last level after some plot. mechanism. Design an automaton that can turn on the power when the total value of coins in mechanism coin is greater than or equal to nine pence. And this is just a toggle, so it's off and on. Device that stores a queue of coins. Next, drop the frontmost coin. 
automaton will test the value of the frontmost coin is one, three, or six. So we are going to probably need an integrator to keep track of how many pence have come in. At least I think we're going to. Let me read the documentation on integrator again. So I can set and I can increment. That's it. And what are my coin values? One, three, and six. All right. So are we always starting in the off state? We're always starting with, there's no nine pence coin. So we're always going to deal with at least one coin. And I don't think we have to deal with the, we do have to deal with the state where there's an inadequate number of coins. So that's good to know. And if we're using an integrator, then I don't think mapping gets us much. So. Our only action with this coin is to drop it and take the next coin, right? So all of our conditions are on this transition. So there are just these three coins. So if it's a 1p coin, then we're going to increase the incrementer, or uh, increment the integrator. Can I do multiple? Yeah, I will let me do multiple ones. If it's a three pence coin, then we can. Oh, we can. No, we don't want to set it. We want to. Yikes! Want to increment it. Cannot do it three times. Incrementers are very, very inconvenient. Okay, we'll do it fine. And then this goes here. And then we're gonna do the same thing here for the six pence coin. Who designed this currency? Seems very inconvenient to have one, three, and six. Increment. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So we're always going to end up here, right? Uh, except in the case where there is no coin in at all, in which case we will do nothing, which I think is correct. So we actually don't need to handle that case. Okay, so at this point, we can go and drop the next coin. And here we need a bunch more transitions, which are going to be exactly the same as in our first case. Ex 
except that in this situation, we will need to handle the you're out of coins case, right? Right, because when you're out of coins, at that point, we want to either turn on the engine or don't. I think we can use a mapper for this. Right, so that's our default. We've handled all three cases, so we'll end up here when we're out of coins. And if the integrator, I cannot do that. I cannot use a mapper for this, because I guess it's not. Yep. It's not really uh, an arithmetic thing. Okay, so in this case, If integrator is nine, that's it. And I've got a big, there are some conditions on this transition duplicated with other transitions. All right, so I think what it's complaining here, really? This one doesn't look like it's conflicted, duplicated. I didn't put a second nine anywhere. Well, let's try it. We'll see what happens. This is very Baroque. Looks like it's working. I'm sure there's some case we've uh, failed to... failed to handle. Let's see. No, that was it. Wait, did I just... Did I just do better than the uh, standard? Ooh, that's amazing. That's great. <laughs> the sweat. And we've earned our achievement, Al Jamel the Coffee Maker. Well, this has been Gaming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching as I played through Chapter 2 of Alan's Automaton Workshop.